All right, guys. Right off the bat here, let me just connect the camera real quick. <coughs> Right off the bat, something that I didn't notice with my personal compressor that I received the first time. That thermometer right there typically comes in its own separate bag with no battery that you have to install. So there is a high likelihood that this compressor has actually seen use already. Let's go ahead and uh, lift her out of the box. Thing appears to be, uh, except for that originally noted issue, legit. Still zip tied. The uh, water pump itself seems to still be in its packaging. As to whether or not it was used, no one knows. Just for reference, I'm gonna grab the thermometer they got with the last one and uh, show you what I mean about not having a battery. Whammo. Comes like this. No battery included, but they give you the instructions for what batteries to purchase. Currently, 14.3 degrees centigrade. I think the big thing to check and see is gonna be as to whether or not it's ever had oil in it. It's kind of hard with one hand, sorry if I'm struggling, guys. The threads seem dry up here. That to me is an indication that either someone was a straight up dead eye with a bottle of oil, or it's never been filled and for whatever reason they just put the uh, battery in at the factory on this particular thermometer. Oil reading currently has nothing in it. Drain plug's nice and tight. All right guys, just so you guys uh, don't roast me in the comments and say that for whatever reason I put cheap oil in it and broke it myself, it's probably about the most expensive oil that you could put in this compressor. Um, this was recommended by all of the Amazon reviewers that gave this compressor five star reviews. So naturally being the uh, westernized consumer that I am, I went ahead and followed their lead. So here we go, let's add some royal purple guys. All right guys, as you can see, we've kind of brought it directly to the uh, top of that red indicator dot, just exactly as the uh, indicator label here says. It says at the top of that red dot on a level surface is an okay level oil. There's my dyslexia again. <laughs> it's a, oh, I almost did it twice for you guys. It's the oil level okay. The center of that red dot would actually be refill oil immediately. So by putting it to the top of that red indicator dot right there. And it looks like we could even fill it slightly more. Um, that's where you actually wanna be with this unit. You don't wanna be in the middle, you wanna be at the top of that red dot. All right guys, I think that's gonna just about do it for the top up on the oil. We're ready to put the supplied cap in. It's a uh, vented cap as you would normally see on most compressors. This prevents pressure from building inside this crankcase right here um, in the event that uh, pressure does slip by the piston rings in this unit. If the pressure ends up in this crankcase instead of in the PCP reservoir that it's filling, the pressure won't build up inside the crankcase, it'll be able to vent to the atmosphere and everything's hunky-dory. Alright guys, this is that vented oil cap I was talking about that goes on the uh, filler cap that was normally supplied with this little tag from the factory. You're going to want to go ahead and replace this tag and stopper with the vented oil cap and I'm just going to transfer this little o-ring that was on this stopper cap it's just plastic threads with an o-ring so it doesn't need to be a thousand foot pounds here guys just enough to get to snug down on that o-ring and cause a seal it doesn't need to be ultra ultra tight all right inside the parts bag that held the uh, vented cap here you're also going to get the uh, filters and a couple of o-rings for the for the fill hose itself this is going to be the filters the cotton filters that go inside this canister you get a parts bag that has a selection of o-rings for replacement throughout the pump get these two valve knobs 
One goes on each side of the pump, one here and one here, high side, low side. And we got this guy, our filler hose. We got our female foster and we got what I think are BSP threads on this side, although I don't know the size, so don't quote me. I'll try and put it up in the text. First thing I did was I took my valves and I just uh, went ahead and threaded these guys right into the spots where they go. And I just kind of got them all the way snug and then loosened them a couple of turns so that I knew that the valves were open 100%. Whenever you uh, start this compressor up, you definitely want to make sure that those valves are open 100% so that the compressor itself starts up under no load. The pressure that's being generated on a pump like this is very significant. Significant to the point where if you tried to start this up uh, from you know, a cold start type of a situation and it was trying to generate pressure at the same time, you might run into uh, a strain that would damage the pump itself. Instead of dealing with that, just remember whenever you start this pump up, you got to open your valves first. The next piece of this puzzle is going to be going ahead and attaching your fill hose, which to me is honestly infuriatingly short. I don't like having to put my gun on the ground. That bugs the shit out of me. So when I get the chance, I'm going to try and upgrade this fill hose to a longer Air Venturi style hose. It's like, you know what, 36 inches I think. What that will enable me to do is have the pump resting on the ground next to a bucket of water that cools it and have the gun on a table or chair. Now from the factory, there is a plastic ceiling plate inside of there these little white pieces i don't know if you can kind of see them there focus for me focus all right these little white things actually come pre-installed inside this port so you don't need to put a seal in this thing for it to be ready to rock and roll you just thread this fitting into that hole good to go now i'm just going to grab a, a wrench real quick to give this a quick snug it doesn't need to be ultra tight it's only compressing a plastic washer for a seal plate but uh, let's go ahead and make sure that's a little bit more than hand tight. We're dealing with 3000 PSI or so, so you definitely want to make sure your connections are good. You can kind of feel it when it snugs up and compresses. And you don't, you don't really need to go nuts here. It's not even a full quarter turn that I gave it, but I'm very confident that we're going to get a good seal. Just for good practice, I'm going to go ahead and open this guy right here and verify that there is indeed a cartridge inside. And there is, but look at that. If you notice, there's already a dark spot on this particular filter. I don't know if you guys can see that, but if you see that there's already a dark spot on this particular filter, so it is perfectly likely that this has been run already. Let's pop this out of here and see what the back side of the filter looks like. Stubborn. Okay. She's been run, fellas. Which is interesting to me because how in the hell would they get it back in the sealed bag? Let's go ahead and uh, toss a fresh filter in there and see what happens. It didn't feel like a very positive seal on this guy. When I tightened that down, it's interesting. We'll see if it ends up leaking from there, guys. Just go ahead and push these right onto these brass nipples right here that come out of the uh, pump unit itself. Once for supply, once for return back to the bucket, I, the way I like to do it is I like to go from the pump to this top port right here and you know basically just follow the laws of gravity at that point. Water goes down through the head. Uh, water is pumped back into the bucket instead of trying to pump water from this bottom port uphill uh, You know through the pump uphill through the pump and then back into the bucket that just seems counterproductive So we got our water pump running See if the uh, directions tell us anything specific about startup all right guys, as you can see here, it wants us to go ahead and open up those valves I was talking about and then run the compressor for three to five minutes to uh, kind of test run it before we try and generate any kind of pressure. Let's go ahead and get this uh, going and see what happens.
Alright guys, well after just about four solid minutes of running, looks like we've got about 50 degrees Celsius built up on our pump. And I know it's not building any pressure right now, but it's also showing me that it's not overheating during its, its uh, break-in period here. So that's a good sign, even though it may have potentially been used. I'm not willing to naysay this unit yet based on the fact that, for all I know, this could just be you know, a really caring young hang employee that test fired this pump on a bench for me and ensured proper operation. So until this thing fails me, I'm really not willing to knock it. Let's go ahead and try and fill the rifle and see what happens when we hook it up. All right guys, we got the 25 cal M rod out here that we were shooting with last week. Um, hopefully we'll be able to go ahead and fill this guy right off the bat. I mean, if it fills it with no issues, even though it showed signs of use in the box, I'm gonna go ahead and validate this as a, uh, a good unit. Let's hook it up and see what happens. Now please note, I have both of these valves from this compressor in my hand. So even though that foster fitting is connected, there will be no pressure built on the onset of startup because I've got these valves in my hand. Obviously I pulled them out because it was the break-in cycle. Normally they'll be threaded in, but I noticed that the vibration of the pump actually tends to have these things kinda wanna screw themselves in as it's running. So I'm just gonna probably start it with the, the uh, valves out each time. That way I can be for sure there's no, there's no load on this pump. And then after it starts running, I'll start threading in the low side then the high side. Alright guys, looks like we got the gun to just under 3000 PSI, so this is a really, really, really good sign. We had no leaks from our canister that I was concerned about, we had no leaks from the uh, manifolds either where we screw our ports in or where we screw it, where we screw our valves in or where we screw our fill hose in. And uh, if you notice, I don't know if I did it right, but a lot of YouTubers were saying that when this pump is running and you go to turn it off, you need to depressurize those valves before turning it off to go ahead and verify that there's no pressure left in the pump after it's done running to strain parts within it. Um, I just went ahead and cracked that high side valve while it was still under operation and then uh, it vented the pressure within that hose and hopefully I did it right. If I did it right, throw it down in the comments. If there's something that I should be doing differently that's gonna, you know, help improve the longevity of this pump over the, over the course of its life, also, throw it down in the comments for me, let me know. Now the good thing is here, because we went ahead and vented that, uh, that feed line while the compressor was under operation, it has no pressure in it currently and that's verified by the gauge. So what we're safe to do at this point is disconnect the foster fitting that fills the gun and have no safety issues whatsoever. Typically there would be a small charge built up in that line between your fill source, be it a scuba tank, or this compressor and the point where it fills, but by opening that valve while uh, while the compressor was still running, there's actually no pressure left in this line right here. All right guys, I know there's kind of a glare from the light there, but I hope that you can see that it's filled to about 2700 PSI right now. It's the first time that this young hang compressor has ever filled anything in my, comp in my possession. And uh, I would say for its first go, it went just fine. Um, the signs of use that I was able to notice on this unit itself do not seem to have adversely affected it. And uh, I will keep you guys updated how it goes. All right, guys, if you like these little mini segments within the Pella reviews, let me know. Throw it down in the comments and hit that subscribe button so I know I'm on the right track.
All right, guys, we just shot three ultra consistent magazines of the Skenko Ultra Shock pellets that we'll be reviewing this week out of this gun. Time for a top up. Let's see if this young hand can fire up for a second time and get his top back up to nominal pressure. All right, guys, and as you can see here, we were able to go ahead and recharge this gun. No problem, no issues to between 26 and 2700 PSI. Ready to go for another three full magazines. All right, guys, really cool episode today. We got to bring to fruition a problem we had about a week ago that now we've solved with a replacement straight from Amazon. If you're unfamiliar with the story behind this, basically I got a pump around Christmas. That pump started to fail about a week ago. I contacted Amazon. They started a return for me immediately. Issued me a new pump. I had it within 72 hours of filing the claim. I didn't even have to return my old one yet. They issued me an email tag that I just take to the UPS store, uh, and I got 30 days to return my old one or I'll be billed for a second one. No problem, right? I'm back in business. I would say, realistically, if I had purchased this off of eBay from an eBay seller, no way are they gonna just give away a second unit and hope that the guy sends it back and then just you know, chase him for the money later. Amazon is such a corporate giant that their, rep that their return policy speaks volumes about who they are as a company. I will always continue to buy my high price accessories from Amazon just based on the strength of their return policy. Having said all that, things that I like and dislike about this compressor. First off, the price can't be overlooked. No matter what anybody says about country of origin, as far as where it was manufactured, this is still doing what the Air Venturi pump does for about $1,200. This was $359 to my door, and I've gotten a replacement one for that same $359 with no money out of pocket so far, and no money in return shipping. That's huge on something that weighs this much. Secondly, I've never used another PCP compressor, but I definitely like the fact it didn't take a whole lot of time to go ahead and fill up the internal reservoir on my Marauder. Now I know that it's a very small reservoir compared to a scuba tank, but by the same token, I didn't have to run the compressor long enough to heat it up past 50 centigrade. Comp the only real negative that I can think about this pump right off the top of my head is the fact that the fill hose itself is just so short. That's the maximum extension of my fill hose for my pump right there. That does not usually give me the option to keep my rifle off the ground unless I set up like a box or some short object underneath it. I don't like having my gun that, co that close to the ground. You might be totally cool with it. For me, that bugs me. If I had to make any negative off the top statements against it, it would just be the length of the fill hose. All right guys, this brings to conclusion the first and only problem that I've had with my first and only PCP high pressure air pump. Uh, hopefully this one holds together for me and if it doesn't, I'm gonna make the exact same move that I did previously and just reach out to Amazon. Hit that subscribe button so you stay current on our giveaways, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.